So we've looked at microwave spectroscopy, which uh, excites rotational states. We've looked at the vibrational spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, that excites vibrational states. So what about electronic spectroscopy? Or in the lab, we normally refer to this as UV vis. What exactly are we exciting here? Well, a molecule itself has a series of molecular orbitals um, that are full and uh, up to a point. And uh, when we get to the tippy top right, that is the HOMO, the highest unoccupied, or sorry, the highest occupied molecular orbital. And then we've got the LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And up here, right, we've got essentially got three states above here. So we have the ability to promote electrons from the HOMO to the LUMO. And uh, this energy gap here is normally why molecules have a particular color. And it corresponds to an energy that uh, is typically in the visible kind of range. And so we can kind of do promotions up to here. We can actually absorb uh, ultraviolet light. The molecules might have a large homolumo gap, or we can certainly promote from a deeper uh, molecular orbital to the LUMO, or possibly even a deeper one still, uh, all the way up to a uh, LUMO1 or LUMO2. And these might correspond to ultraviolet transitions. We can also go ahead and actually take one of the deep core electrons here, and we can actually go ahead and pull it out of any bound molecular orbital. So this point here is just essentially a free electron. And it turns out that X-rays are going to do the job here. Let's talk a little bit about some basic color theory. We can look at a color wheel with the six sort of primary colors of the rainbow here, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. We know indigo is a made up color. Of course, there's really no color here called indigo. And uh, what we call white light is a mixture of all of these, maybe not uh, equi intensity, but certainly there's certainly a large component of each color that we visualize as white light. And we can take some white light and we can shine it through a solution. So if we have a cuvette here that contains a substance that will absorb uh, some of that light, that white light comes through, and certain colors don't make it through on the other side. And so uh, maybe we've got this solution here that absorbs red. And so if it absorbs red wavelengths, so uh, red wavelengths are going to be sort of in this 620 to 700 region, what we will see actually is the complementary color. And so on this color wheel, the color that is directly opposite from the one color is called the complementary color. And our eyes would perceive and our brain would translate this into green light. It turns out this is only one way we perceive color, and so it's certainly not the only way we can see green light. For instance, we know chlorophyll is green for a different reason. So this is a UV vis spectrum. Actually, it's more of a visible spectrum for chlorophyll. We can see that chlorophyll has a strong absorption here in the red region. We also have a strong absorption here in sort of the uh, blue and violet region here. And because these colors are being absorbed, the colors that actually make it through uh, in our eyes are perceived as green or certainly sort of greeny orangey, I suppose. And so that's why plants look green because the transmitted light has uh, only the uh, green color associated with it. 